It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The Shell Game. The hoofbeats of Hoppy's horse at the moment are ringing on the cobblestones along the waterfront of no less a place than old New York City. Longshoremen turn and stare at the unusual sight of Hoppy in California in their gala silver-studded rodeo shafts riding down the broad, dirty street, studying the warehouse fronts as they ride along. Our train heads west in less than two hours, California. We haven't much time to be paying social calls on your old girlfriend. Doggone it, Hoppy. The address she gave me is right on this here block. Oh, but that was two years ago. Maybe this business Lil inherited from her uncle folded up or moved. Sounds like shooting back along those docks. Oh, that hash knife, Lil. She always was kind of soft on me. <laughs> oh, she was a little shy, but mighty loving me, Dale. Yeah. Wait. What is it? There on the corner, that plate glass window. Can you read those words through the dust? Uh, uh, Carver Trading Company. Uh, that's it. That's <laughs> Little Carver's warehouse. Come on. <laughs> Looks like the place is closed. Now it's open. Yeah, looks like the place is empty. Why, you bull like an old maverick, Great Day, am I glad to see you. <laughs> yeah, Lil, you're a sight for sore eyes. You remember Hoppy. Hi, Lil. Do I remember Hoppy, the most famous cow wrangler in the whole dead burn country. <laughs> ah, take it oh. easy, Lil. When it comes to fame, they still talk about you and Mescalera. Yeah, them sourdough flapjacks you used to make at One Eye Joe's hash house. And, and that tripe, too, oh boy. <laughs> The boys all felt that a woman like you should get her face on paper money like a president. <laughs> My face, a woman like me would rather get her hands on it. Well, from the looks of all this stuff you got piled up around here, you ain't doing too bad. Uh, it's a living. But there have been times I'd have traded it all for just one evening's walking hand in hand with you under that Texas moon, honey boy. Oh, Come here, California. You ain't kissed me. Yet. <laughs> now, wait, Lil. Take it easy. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sounds like that kiss came complete with fireworks. Come on, straighten up, honey boy. Stop buckling at the knees. That was just a sample. Now, if I really kiss uh, no, you... no, 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 give me time, Lil. I, I, I ain't caught my breath. <laughs> I didn't know folks were so free with their gunplay in New York, Lil. Well, they ain't. There must be cops after one of them waterfront gangs. Oh, well, like I always say, the only reason folks don't mind their business... Is they having any mine or are they having any business? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to my office and set. I already sent my help home. We'll be able to shoot at that without the usual racket. I'd better phone Fu Chow and tell him to set a couple extra places for supper tonight. Well, uh, that's mighty nice of you, but we're leaving in less than two hours. Our train is... Oh, what? We've been with the Great West Rodeo at Madison Square Garden. Show closed today. Great day. Why doesn't somebody tell me these things? Oh, we would have called on you before, but, but, but... but Get away <laughs> from that pepper. <laughs> oh, watch it, California, honey. I just found up a sample from this, uh, hundred weight of black pepper. Boy, yeah. Uh... You, you sell that stuff, too? Well, I buy and sell just about everything, honey boy. <laughs> from the looks of the stuff you got piled up here, I can believe it. Now, this pepper just arrived from Shanghai aboard the freighter Diomede. Hold out your hand, Hoppy, and I'll pour you a sample. I, I want you to smell what real pepper's like. Now, wait a minute. Wait. You don't have to pour that whole sack into my hand. <laughs> there. You can tell it's fresh, by the way. <laughs> watch it, California. Watch it. <laughs> 
My nose ain't the same since I once had it broken in two places. You should keep it out of those places. <laughs> I always say our nose should be seen and not heard. Well, uh, I'll move back a bit. Then we are. Oh, where did you come from? Put down that. Don't gun. move. Don't move and I'll shoot. <laughs> of hours before they're due to catch a train out of New York, heading back west with their Rodeo show, Hoppy in California visit one of California's old girlfriends, Hash Knife Lil Carver, who now runs a warehouse on the waterfront. While showing Hoppy a sample of a new shipment of pepper, they're held up by a skinny little gunman with an English accent. He orders Lil into a storeroom. Get inside. Quick. Do as he says, Lil. Keep your hands up, you. You touch that lady, a yellow coyote. And Shut I... up, California. <laughs> Easy with that gun, mister, the way you're shaking us loud to go off. I'm going to follow that woman into that room. If the police come, send him away. If I hear him coming toward the door, I'll kill your fat lady friend. Why, you Hey, so... none of that, so help me, I... Yeah. All right. I'm going to cross over to that room. I want you two blithers to look natural-like when the bobbies get here. Lower your hands. Wait! What you got in that end? Oh, nothing but a handful of pepper. Oh, my eyes! He's blinded! Get him! Oh, oh good work, Hoppy! Hoppy! Hoppy, you're... You're hit! That blood! Lil, let me. He's getting out. California, grab him. Come on. We'll get him! Wait, wait, stop! The police, hold it, California. Yeah. He's running into a police trap. I know. Look, he's heading toward those ducks. They're going to shoot. Oh, we got him. Yeah, no, he fell over there. What happened? Hoppy, California. Where is he? Where is that pole cat? Lying over there by the docks, Leo. The police just shot him dead. California sure taking a long time talking to that police sergeant out front. Oh, still, I gotta get this bandage fastened. My ribs were only grazed, Lil, not ventilated. You're wrapping me up like a mummy. Oh, here comes the honey boy now. California, did you find out who that gunman was? Uh, that there police feller said he, he was a smuggler. Smuggler? Yep, name of English Eddie. Uh, the police at Hong Kong cabled the New York lawmen to be on the lookout for him. He was stowing away on some freighter, they thought, and, and sure enough, they find him on this here ship, the Diomede. The Diomede? Yep, but he gave him a slip. That is, until he run into us. Well, what was he smuggling? Well, I don't know. You, you police sergeant said something about him running a thing called the, the Duke Export Company in Hong Kong. What? Yeah, but it seems that that was just a blind. He disappeared from Hong Kong, and, well, you know the rest of it. What's the matter, Lil? Well, nothing, Hoppy, except that I was planning to bid on a shipment of stuff tomorrow morning that was putting up at auction for freight charges. A shipment of abalone shells sent by the Duke Export Company of Hong Kong. That's mighty interesting. Who were they shipped to? Well, some hombre who never even showed up. Name of Simon Turner. Uh, baloney shells? Abalone. <laughs> You're such an ignorant baboon, honey boy. Uh, if I uh, can get them cheap enough, I can make a profit on them. Button factories use them. Well, what would a smuggler be doing shipping in the baloney shells? Let the police worry about that. We'll be aboard that train heading back home in just 30 minutes from now. Yeah, I got news for you, Hoppy. What? That police sergeant says we got up here at the investigation over at headquarters tonight. Oh, no. Oh, what are you worrying about? I can put you both up at my place. I got plenty of room. <laughs> Of course, I was sorry we had to miss our train yesterday, Lil, but after tasting these flapjacks, I'd say it was worth it. This is the best breakfast since we hit New York. Mm -hmm. You just say a mouthful of it. I sure hate to leave. <laughs> Better write down the address of the apartment here in California so you can write Lil direct when you get back to Bar 20. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Got a pencil? Yeah. Right here in my pocket. Are you... Hmm, that's funny. Oh, shucks. 
What is it, honey boy? Oh, these cartridges I took from that hombre's gun yesterday. Here. I forgot to give them to the police when we give them the gun. Well, I reckon Lil can take care of that. Be glad to, Hoppy. I'll get them off the table here for you. They... Hmm. What's the matter? Nothing especially. Just this cartridge. It's light. I don't think there's any powder in it. The lid is loose, too. I think... Yeah, I can pull it out with my fingers. There, look, it is empty. Yeah? Hey, wait a minute. What is it, Hoppy? There's something inside the case, a rolled up piece of paper. Ooh, yeah, can you get it out? Just a minute. There. Why would that buzzard load his gun with a dummy cartridge? Oh, they got it mixed up with his regular ammunition. There's writing on this bit of paper. Yeah, yeah, I see. Well, what does it say, Hoppy? Uh, can't make it out. Just three words. Black cat, Salem. Hmm? What in tarnation? I don't know. Well, I'll let the police worry about it. Here, Leo, you take it. Give it to him, will you? Sure thing, Hoppy. Oh, great jumping bullfrogs, look at that clock. I gotta get down to the pier. That auction starts in 20 minutes. Say, you two got nothing to do till trading time. Why don't you come on down with me to the auction? Hey, that's a rip snorting idea. Be glad to go with you, Lil. Two and a half tons of fine oriental abalone shell with high mother of pearl content. All right, folks, who we'll open up? Two and a half tons of... Ten dollars? Ten dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Why, a fraction of their shipping cost. Come, come, folks. Looks like that fat old hombre in the yachting suit wants them too, Lil. Do I hear sixty dollars? Sixty dollars. That's telling them. Sixty dollars I hear. One hundred. One hundred dollars. The gentleman said one hundred dollars. What's that old goat want him for? One hundred and fifty. I hear one hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred. Same worth it. Two hundred and fifty. That'll stop him. The lady with a green ostrich feather in her hat says two hundred and fifty dollars. Going. Three hundred. Three hundred and fifty and they ain't worth it. Easy, Lil. Four hundred. Five hundred. Lil, no. You can't lick us. Five hundred. Five. Do I hear more? Will you accept my check? I'll Sorry, be... mister, the rules call for spot cash. The bid is $500 cash. Going, going, sold to the lady with a green ostrich feather for $500. It sure was sweet of you in California to help me load all them shells and store them away here in the warehouse, Hoppy. That was some job. We were glad to do it. There's a big wagon pulled up in front. And guess who's getting off with two tough-looking umbrellas? We haven't got time for guessing games, California. Our train leaves in an hour. We better collect our guns it's and... It's fat, boy. What? That dude in the sailor sombrero who rode again you in the auction. He's coming in. Uh, good afternoon. I was hoping I'd get you in before you closed for the day. Well, we're just about to. <laughs> Uh, I see. I suppose you've been busy examining those high-priced abalone shells, eh? You think they're worth it? I don't know. We haven't opened the crates yet. You haven't, eh? Uh, Mrs. Carver, I'm Dr. Sidney Trotter of the Trotter Laboratories. This is my assistant, Willie. Frankly, I was quite bewildered as to why you should be willing to pay so fantastic a sum for those shells. You seem to be willing to pay even more. Ah, but my dear sir, for me they have a remarkable value. The unique balance of calcium carbonate in the South China Sea abalone shell gives it a great advantage for certain medicinal experiments being conducted by my laboratory. So? Mrs. Carver, I'll pay you $600 cash for those shells. So? Good. My wagon is outside and my men are waiting. Will he? You and Oscar. Now pull up there, Doctor. We just spent the whole darn day storing the stuff away. Now, these boys got to catch a train. Won't tomorrow do? Uh, I'm afraid not. My experiments cannot wait. Besides, my men can handle it by themselves. They don't need any help from your assistance. Well, the point is, my friend, I'm closing up and tomorrow will have to do. Uh, you distress me, madam. Will he? They refuse to make delivery. Maybe this changes their mind. With a gun like that looking me in the face, I could change anything. Except my opinion of you, Willie. <laughs> Keep your opinions. 
All we want are the shells. All right. Into that back office, gentlemen. And, uh, shall I say, lady... California and Lil are held up by a so-called Dr. Sidney Trotter. After tying the three of them up in Lil's office, Trotter and his two thugs take Lil's crates of abalone shells and drive away. Darkness has fallen as Hoppy finally gnaws through the rope around Lil's wrist, enabling her to reach for some shears on her desk and cut them loose. There. Okay, Hoppy. Thanks. Where are our guns? On top of that cabinet. Uh, hold down that six gun off the wall while you're about it. There. Get up, California. Hey, you bet. Yeah. What do you want with a gun, Lil? I'm going after those road agents. That's what I want with a gun. Now, hold on. But you ain't got no horse. I got a whole darn stable full of horses. And if they can haul dray wagons and beer trucks, I reckon they won't have any trouble toting Lil Carver Bear back. Let's go. <laughs> What about our train? We missed it an hour ago. Don't go on them horse-grown streetcars. Out of the way. Take it easy, Lil. Let's use our heads. Pull up here. We'll never get anywhere riding around the night like this. We've lost them. Dad, Bernard, Hoppy, I'll catch them wall-eyed coyotes if it's the last thing I ever do. Let's find the shipping officer that put on that auction this afternoon. Maybe the auctioneer knows our fat friend, Dr. Trotter. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Did you find that auctioneer in this shipping office? Yeah, he says he never saw Trotter before and doesn't know who he is. Lil, I've been thinking. Those shells were shipped by the Duke Export Company. In other words, by English Eddie, who stowed away on the same ship with him. He addressed them to some hombre who apparently doesn't even exist, named Simon Turner. Now, why would English Eddie want to fool with a mess of abalone shells? Could be the captain of the Diamede might give us a clue. The uh, captain of the who? The ship that brought those shells over from China. The fellow at the shipping office said the captain is living aboard while she's in port. Come on, Topper. <laughs> Mighty nice of you to go to all this trouble, Captain, taking us down the ship's hold. I'm glad to be of any assistance, Mr. Cassidy. Is this where you found the uh, English Eddie hiding out? Yes, am Yeah, my own crates of shells and other cargo. He got away from my men when we first discovered him after arriving in New York. Left in such a hurry, he forgot to take his coat. Funny thing, filled his pockets with abalone shells. Oh, what happened to him? Those shells in his pockets. Oh, I tossed them back into the crates. He'd opened a number of crates, and the shells were scattered everywhere. Well, what did he do that for? Search me. Probably never would have been crawled if he hadn't come back to the ship. The day after we docked and trying to get back down in the hold. Don't ask me why. Police had been alerted by then, of course, and... Well, you know the rest of it. Yeah. I see your men didn't quite clean up all those shells off the floor. Where? Over there. What's well, under those pipes of the wall near the floor? Well, it looks like there's a couple of dozen jammed under there. Let's have a look. Uh, I'd like to examine a few of those shells. They sure are big, ain't they? Yeah. A lot heavier than they ought to be. Look here, Lil. What? Under here, where the edge of the shell curves inward. Hey, looks like it's been filled with some kind of cement. Exactly. Captain, if you don't mind, have you got a little hammer I could borrow? Hoppy, that ship's captain has already notified the police, so why are we still galloping through the night? And if those polecats are going to be caught, we got to catch them while the trail's still hot. Well, what trail? You remember that piece of paper we found in that empty cartridge case from the English Eddie's gun? Yeah, it said Black Cat Salem. Couldn't that be the name of a ship? 
The black cat out of Salem? Poppy, in my business, I know just about every ship that ever comes in and out of New York. And there ain't no black cat. Well, it could be a smaller vessel. Well, most of the small fry dock over on the Sound or over on Sheep's Head Bay off Brooklyn. Well, why the... Wait a minute. I just thought of something. There's a street, a Salem Street, in Brooklyn, running right down to Sheep's Head Bay with a pier at that end. Well, come on. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> Well, this is it. Salem Street Pier and nary a boat in sight. Hold it. Over there in the moonlight. Fat boy's wagon. Sure is. But but, but, but there ain't nothing in it. Where do you suppose they took them shells? Wherever they took the boat. What boat? Take a look at that sign on that post. You can read it right well in this bright moonlight. Yeah, black cat. Daily fishing parties. Captain Willie Alvig. Willie! That big baboon who was with Crowder. That seas like glass. You can still see the wake their boat left when they sailed out of here. We can follow it like a trail. Hey, there's some lights over there, a boathouse. We could rent us a boat. Yeah, I think we'll catch them yet. Come on. This wake we're found is getting brighter and heavier. It won't be long now. Oh, I hope not. Oh, my stomach's beginning to back up and turn around. Try to hold out, California. Oh, I aim to climb aboard, Hoppy. We'll run this thing close under a stern. California now grab the lifeboat and climb aboard. Well, what about me? I'll be missing out on all the fun. You go back and call the police. I want to turn those hombres over to somebody when we bring them back. Hey, am I seeing things? Or are them lights ahead? Yeah. It's their boat, all right. Dead ahead. The black cat. I only hope the sound of the engine will drown out our motor. All right. Get set, California. Okay. Grab for that light, Bose, as we pass under. Jump! Willie, there must have been another crate. But, Mr. Trotter, you yourself point them out to us. We take every crate you say. Maybe English Eddie make a mistake. Impossible. English Eddie never made those kind of mistakes. Would he write me he was enclosing diamonds in 20 shells and then send only five? But do not blame me. I told you to put in a claim for the shipment before it was actioned off. Oh, you incredible blockhead. I should tell him, I suppose, that Eddie Duke and I did business together. With him wanted by the police of three continents. That's all I had to do to put us all behind bars. But I tell oh, you... shut up. Either you lost a crate off the wagon or... Or our enterprising lady friend, Mrs. Carver, lied when she said she hadn't opened those crates. That is it. She lied. She took those shares. Uh, perhaps. Well, we'll ask her to turn back. I'm afraid we'll have to pay Mrs. Carver another visit, will it? Tonight. Can I spare you the trouble? Oh, you! Steady, Willie. Don't try reaching for that shooting iron. Oh. You too, Dr. Trotter. How did you get aboard? Does it matter? Nice little assortment of diamonds you have there on the table. And quite a mess of broken shells, I noticed. I have a few diamonds myself to match yours, Doctor. In fact, a whole pocket full. Here. Are these what you're looking for? Well, you, you, you did find them. With the cooperation of the late English Eddie Duke. You see, he laid them aside in the hole of the Diomede for his own use in America. Scoundrel. Only it wasn't America he ended up in, but in another place where he doesn't need his diamonds. And neither will you, gentlemen, where you're going. California, there's nothing like stretching out in the hay in an old-fashioned horse car heading back to God's country. Except maybe the way you make trouble pay off. Huh? What do you mean? Well, look at the trains we missed. And, and getting ourselves nearly shot and drowned and, and half dead of seasickness. <laughs> and in the end, what happened? 
The government pays us a hat full of money for our half of the fine they slapped on them smugglers. Well, it isn't that I go around looking for trouble. Wish I had a chance to shed it all at once, like you. Like me? What are you talking about? Lil, she's mighty sweet on you. If you'd have stayed behind and married her, your troubles would have been over for life. Oh, I just reckon I ain't a marrying man, Hoppy. No, sir, marriage ain't for California Carlson. Ah, marriage is a great institution. Well, if it's so great, why ain't you ever married? Well, California, I'll tell you. Hmm? It just doesn't seem to me I'm ready for an institution. Oh, you ain't? Oh, shucks! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye from Hoppy in California. We'll be back soon, and of course we hope you'll be with us. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Shell Game was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>